Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, Darius Lomachowskis. Um, I hope you can see me and hear me well. Uh, today is Friday, finally, after a uh, such a, huge, a big volatile week. I mean, huge volatile week. I mean, yeah, finally Friday has come. And uh, yeah, uh, look, um, today is the 17th of March. You know that. Um, one thing that we need to do before we jump into our videos is, of course, to have a read through our uh, risk disclaimer. So uh, let's have a look at that one. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment uh or should i say the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such this material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product so yep guys uh pretty straightforward but um i'll give you a few um seconds to read the rest kind of and we can continue Okay, guys, so um, the lighting today is a little bit off, I think. I think you can see the reflection from my bald head. But, um, hey, um, let me just try to fix that a little bit, guys. Let's see if I can do anything here. But, um, yeah, um, well, I'll be a little bit more pink today. But, hey, <laughs> what can you do? It's, ne it's never perfect. So we're still, like I said, we're still trying to kind of adjust everything here so um well hopefully let me just quickly double check something one moment guys let's see if this is going to be a little bit better um hmm, okay okay look in general um yeah guys i'm gonna lean a little bit forward here maybe yeah like there's gonna be less reflection from my bald head but anyway guys um as always before we um before we jump in into the charts yes you had the read through the risk disclaimer um also just a quick uh mentioning of our uh easy markets uh website here which you can always check out for more information about us um but yeah uh look uh if um if you want to uh, find out some more info about this yes you can check it out you can get, reach out to us i mean we'll our you know our team is always happy to help you out in any way uh so yeah do not hesitate to do that now let, let's jump into the charts guys i mean i think that you you waited all, already uh for a while now so nikkei 225 so guys i talked about this and uh basically um, look, uh, we had a nice uh, reversal here back to the upside, and that's beautiful. Of course, the the whole kind of positivity came in from the um, from the mm, from the U.S. yesterday because again there are some uh, some banks or some so yeah there were some there are still some failing banks in the U.S. which um, uh, got a bailout or let's say got support from the government, so that came as a positive news. And uh, yep, we saw a nice uh, push here uh, to the upside here. So we had the U.S. and indices rallying, and they kind of dragged the Nikkei SX200 back to the upside. So what you can see here, we have a nice uh, move here to the upside. We had a good um, uh, push 
uh, back above this hurdle. And look, what I was talking about yesterday, if you remember, I said that if we stay below this, uh, this downside line, I will continue targeting the downside. Well, as, as if it said, if we push back above this uh, 27,000 territory, I'll go a little bit higher. Well, look what happened. I mean, we pushed back above the 27,000, we stayed above it, and now we're, yeah, we're seeing that push a little bit higher. Now, with my arrow here, I think I need to lower it down a little bit. I mean, I think I was too, too ambitious. Uh, so I'm gonna just gonna aim for the 200 day EMA first together with the 100 day EMA or maybe even actually all of these EMAs but in general I'm gonna aim for that area I want to see what's gonna happen further but um, yeah look um, at this point I would say um, I'm cautiously bullish okay I can't, this is the thing this is a tricky bit. So if we stay above the um, if we stay above the twenty seven thousand mark or this whole highlighted zone here, then yes, I'll aim a little bit more to the upside. I'm not gonna drag this one way too much higher if unless we start clearing the EMAs and we start pushing above those. If we push above those, then great. Yes, we could uh, get a larger move here to the upside and we could see more buyers joining in. Now, uh, in case of the downside, now, first of all, this downside line has to go no longer needed, no longer valid. Uh, once again, we're going to stick to the same, uh, highlighted zone right here. And, uh, yeah, if we, uh, if we fall below it one, one more time, then yes, I will, uh, aim to the downside and in this here at this point i want to see at the weekly chart and basically what i'm going to see here before even clicking there uh we're going to see a false breakout and is that correct yes that is correct so we had a nice false breakout here so basically um nikkei stayed above this territory so in a way maybe we could see a bit of a rebound here uh going into next week be going into fed meeting so don't forget about that one so the madness is not ended yet so you know the market madness has not ended yet so we still could see some uh some kind of crazy activity but um Look, in today in in terms of today, um I think yeah, I think the lighting is a little bit off. Guys, just bear with me one moment. Let me just fix this very quickly. I don't know if this is going to be better or not, but hey, um, yeah, my bald head is still kind of <laughs> reflecting a lot of light. Just bear with me. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be better or not, but hey, okay, let's okay, let's leave it for now. I'll have to play around with it, guys, but yeah, um, I think this is not very good. I think maybe this way could be a little bit better. There we go. My 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 usual pink. Um, yeah. So anyway, guys, back to the charts. Um, sorry for this uh, jumping around here. I mean, like I said, we're uh, trying to play with the lights a little bit here. So yeah. Um, hopefully we can get it right. Now then. Um, yeah, guys. So. Um, ah. Okay, we'll see how this works. But anyway, look, um, I think I'm still. Okay, anyway, forget about it. Right, now then, um, so ba basically going back to Nikkei, look, I mean, the same, this, this, the scenario is the same as I just mentioned, basically. So we need to see, like I said, uh, this one's staying above the 27,000 in order to go higher. Um, and so far we're getting that, we're getting that move above, uh, we're staying above the 27,000 mark. So look, everything's, um, everything's still fine here for the bulls. Uh, but they should not, you know, get their hopes up too much because, again, we, we could see a stall here somewhere near these EMAs. If we clear those, then great, we could go further north. But if we stall, uh, 
uh, you know, here, and then maybe a drift back down could be possible. So keep that in mind. Um, now, ASX 200, very quickly on that one. So beautiful re rebound, of course. Yeah, look, I talked about this hurdle. I'm not going to spend too much time about on this one because, again, I talked about this uh, 6,917 territory right here uh, being the level to watch for the downside. And, uh, yeah, we, we kind of uh we uh, we kind of rebounded nicely from that area so um for now um again the same story is valid again if you're looking for some higher levels at least a push back above this territory here could be possible a push back above the 7100 zone yep would be needed in order to go to the upside um, for the downside, I need to see the same drop below the 6,917 territory in order to go lower. Um, so looking at the uh, NASDAQ 100. So of course, yesterday, beautiful move to the moon. Um, and unfortunately, not like in the song to the moon and back, but no, to the moon. And that's it for now. Um, look, we cleared the downside line. I mean, look at the spectacular move here higher. Mm. Of course, um, the question right now is, are we seeing this uh, beautiful move to the upside because we're going to have the uh, we're going to have the Fed. Um, uh, we're going to have the Fed on uh, on ne well next week, basically. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's wait and see, of course, let's wait and see what's going to happen. But um, look. At this point, uh, I'm kind of leaning, of course, to the upside, of course, that from the technical perspective. Look, I said to you this week, in the beginning of this week, I said that if we break this downside line, I'm going to go higher. I'm going to aim for some higher levels. And uh, well, so far, so good, as I can see here. So we are targeting the uh, the highest point here of um, of this year so far. So the current highest point of this year is around the 12,950 zone um well the question here is now uh can we yeah can we clear that and we can we go all the way maybe towards this um highest point of uh 2022 if i'm not mistaken is that correct no sorry the highest point of of august of 2022 near the 13,740 well at the moment i think it's a it's a nice beautiful um idea but um will that work out i uh, let's not rush into anything guys Basically, for now, I would say um, the fact that we broke the downside line and we pushed above the 12,485 zone, yep, that is uh, looking quite uh, nice here, quite positive. Um, but I'm tar currently targeting, first of all, this little tar this little area, the 12,792, but then, of course, that 12,950 territory. And then we will take it from there. Um, for the downside, if you're looking for some lower levels, well, a drop back below this downside line would be needed. Um, and then we could start maybe looking at some uh, lower levels and then maybe a move back to the EMAs and then we could take it from there. And uh, the German index, DAX, guys. So looking at the picture here, look at this gap here. I mean, this is just spectacular. So, of course, uh, the the bears are not really having fun here right now because, again, they were hoping to see, you know, further declines. Well, yesterday we had that beautiful move lower initially. But look, I mean, the U.S., uh u.s market recovered it dragged uh, everybody else after it and look at this one we're having right now we're having uh, my upside scenario almost working out because again what i talked about previously was that if we do push back above the 50-day ema that's one thing um and then if we can um if we can also push through the 12, 15,200 zone, that's the second thing. So if we can get these, we, well, we're already having, we're having one. So let's get the second one right now. Um, if we get that, then I will get a little bit more comfortable with some higher levels. I'll start examining the upside here. Initially aiming for the 15,500 territory right here and then so on, of course. But let's go slowly on this. Let's not rush into anything. And then, yeah, we could uh, take it from there. Uh, now, uh, USX to uh, USD, which I have here, which is DXY, the same DXY, basically. So, look, I talked about this yesterday, and I said that, hey, be careful and don't rush into anything. Because why? First of all, I mean, maybe I said that this could be a, uh, forming a nice falling veg pattern here. 
which according to all the TA rules tends to break to the um, to the upside. But again, uh, until until the upper side is broken, I mean, we cannot really you know get comfortable with uh, higher levels, and uh, as, as long as we stay. Uh, below this you know territory and we fall below the 50-day EMA there could be some more downside to come but look so far that's working out so the formation is uh, doing its job and in, in a way it's kind of still the boundaries of the formation are still holding nicely now um, in order to yeah consider further declines well I would say this way at the moment we are considering like lower levels but as long as it stays below the uh, 50 day EMA 50 day EMA here again yes I will aim for that 103.05 level or even below that for the upside yes the same scenario remains valid and a break of the upper side of this potential falling veg pattern would be required now uh gold gold calmed down a little bit um but at the same time because of the weakening dollar um we are seeing kind of a slow uh, or a, a slow move still so look i mean the dollar is kind of moving a little bit lower however still there is a chance that you know we could see a pop in the in the us dollar and uh we could see that one rallying so gold buyers are already a little bit on the cautious side because look i mean they had their moment i mean talk about a moment uh it starting from i mean started it started off last week in the beginning of last week after Fe, uh, after powell's uh remarks and uh there we go we had a decline and look at the rally which we had from here guys basically from this drop the low of last week near the 1809 all the way to the 19 uh 35 37 zone here so uh this is a very nice area of uh resistance look i talked about this and i said uh, in my previous videos this week i said that um if we stay above the 1915 uh, territory then yes i will go higher i will aim for that 1935 37 levels and then we could take it from there now at this point um i would say the area to watch here of course becomes this one 1935 37 levels uh around yeah around those dark uh, areas so in order to go higher and uh yes a clear push through that zone is needed and of course then the next target is the 1960 territory marked by the highest point the current highest point of this year now it's going to be very interesting to see if we can clear that up and if we can go all the way here maybe towards the 2000 zone uh we we back in april of uh, 2022 we kind of uh reached almost reached that area in uh in march in the beginning of march of 2022 we reached the uh 2070 territory and uh yeah so again will we will we get something similar again let's wait and see i would say um if we start drawing some let's say trend lines here don't get me wrong they're all tentative i do understand the uh, the wish to kind of have that here on the chart, but uh, let me just remove this angle. Yep. So I do understand that you know this is something you're where you're trying to find something, but okay, if this if this helps you out, guys. I mean, we can uh, you know we can keep that uh, for now, but it's a very tentative line. Don't really focus on it too much. Uh, again, it will be interesting to see if this somehow this line gets respected, but okay don't be surprised if it doesn't so at the moment let's say let's put it this way if we push above the 1935 37 levels uh then yes i will aim for this downside line or, or maybe if it gets clear then the next target is the 1960. um so uh in terms of the downside now previously i talked about the 1900 zone but looking at the way everything's shaping up look i mean i will say this way as if this territory somehow this 1935 37 somehow continues to provide um resistance maybe we could see a bit of a retracement and look i mean everybody's hoping to see that retracement and uh i mean uh looking at the picture here i uh, can st uh, extend it to the right uh yeah, left, left there we go so you can see that basically we could still see a nice move here to the downside the 23.6 becomes quite attractive for everybody um but everybody's like yeah it's still cautious because again they don't we don't know if this is going to still push higher or not 
look at the moment i'm just gonna keep it as it is i'm not gonna rush into anything but um yeah if we um if we clear the 1937 zone i will go a little bit higher um, if we continue to struggle with that to overcome it, then I will consider a uh, move back to the 23.6. Uh, silver very quickly on that one. Look, Doji didn't work out as, as I wanted it yesterday. But again, this is something that, you know, happens. So we need to kind of uh, be very careful. The only problem that I have right now is the fact that we are oscillating um we're oscillating around the emas which i really don't like because again this is kind of a no man's land yes in a way we can say that yes there is still uh, bullish there are still bullish indications but hey look i mean this this territory right here the 22 zone kind of is providing that resistance and we we're, we're yes we're having these little breakouts here but um, in overall still it's struggling to stay above it so once it stays above it yes i'll go higher i'll aim for higher levels but at the moment i am allowing this to move in to move around here for a little bit more um if it starts dropping below this upside line which to be honest i think i need to get rid of uh honestly i think this one it did work out temporarily yesterday but then yeah it stopped working so just we have to adjust as we go um the then the probably the easier way is to keep an eye on yesterday's low if we do fall below it the 21.47 territory if we fall below it then yes could consider maybe a bit of a move to the downside now jumping into natural gas guys um uh, one of the viewers asked for natural gas uh, yesterday so just to kind of you know update you on the same thing look um again i'm watching this just this the zone Mm, here and um really watching these two kind of areas um so the the current current lowest point of this year near the uh, around that two level and uh, on the upside here the uh the the highest point of the current highest point of march near the three zone so basically we're kind of stuck in a range between the two and the three dollars here um if you're looking for some you know short-term moves to the upside or to the downside if you're a range trader this could this area could be perfect for you however if you're looking for something a little bit more trendy wait for a uh, clear breakthrough one of these levels and then we could consider the next short-term directional move oil very quickly on that one had a nice beautiful rebound from that 66.12 territory approximately around here um and uh yeah uh look um at the moment i would say we are it's so far it's working out i mean so far the idea what which i mentioned uh yesterday was the uh, that we might see a rebound if we do see a rebound then i'm considering this psychological 70 level as a good potential target good potential resistance if we if we stay below it another decline could be possible if we clear it we could go a little bit higher initially of course i'll aim for this little target the 72.25 and then uh we could maybe go further north but only up until this upside line so this is where i'm gonna keep that one for now because um i don't know if i mentioned this before but uh look whenever we break a trend line uh there is a, tr a tendency to go and test it from either underneath or above depending on the trend line so if it's an upside line then yes uh, after we break it there is sometimes a tendency to test it from underneath and then go back down uh, so don't be surprised of seeing something like that. Um, so, but again, um, for that idea also to work out, some criteria has to be met. And uh, for now, I'm just sticking to that psychological 70 territory. I want to see if this is going to hold or not. If it holds, another decline could be possible. Now, jumping into Bitcoin. Boom. There we go, guys. Flying to the moon. Uh, and finally, we're uh, clearing this territory, this 25,367, 68 zone here. And uh, what I said to you before, if we stay above it, because at the moment we're just clearing it, if we stay above it, um, then uh, yes, uh, my next target is the psychological 30,000. I'm not going to say anything more, um, but again, I want to see how this is going to play out. If by any chance this, by the end of the day, somehow, or you know, by the end of the week, still travels back down here, uh, and stays below this hurdle then well maybe we're not ready yet for the psychological 30,000 so let's wait and see uh now jumping into ethereum similar story look we're this one still is not breaking but um 
I mean, it's it's in, it's in, it's going there. It's going there. I mean, I'm not saying that this is you know we're, I'm I'm cautiously bullish for sure. But again, uh, anything can happen here. First of all, we need a confirmation like move a stronger confirmation break because look at it this way for example um back here in march and on the 14th of march uh we had a fantastic rally here you know look we, how we nicely pierced through this but then the 1788 territory provided good resistance and we drifted back down so again what's stopping it from having having the same thing again happening so look uh, that's why don't rush it or let's say if you do enter something here then for sure have your stop loss in place and and you have to remember one thing you you have to go like go in with something that you are you can afford to lose because again this is the market we're dealing with it can go very quickly against you so just kind of be cautious and like i said have your risk management in place um if you can afford to lose it you can try you can try but if you if you cannot just don't honestly this is going to just put you in a bad in a worse place and uh yeah you'll see and then it's going to be like a, a rolling effect so it's all psycholo psychology guys so be be careful kind of with that um so at this point look mm, i'm cautiously bullish um the fact that we're trying to clear up this highlighted zone that's great wonderful but can we stay um you know can we stay there can we stay um above this territory well, let's wait and see um jumping into a few pairs very quickly guys AUD USD beautiful beautiful move look I mean I talked about this and I said that hey my downside scenario because we were we were kind of hanging near this downside line and I said that look if we're gonna hold if it's gonna hold we might see a bit of a drift back down we got that but uh what I said before as well that my target for the downside is from around this 0 0.6585 this is what I mentioned in the beginning of this week we did we did kind of come very close to it and then we reversed back up and uh look at what's happening right now we're breaking the downside line we already broke the downside line and we broke the 0 0.6688 if we stay above it i'm gonna go a little bit further north uh my next target around here is the area near the 0 0.6784 um and then we'll take it from there um now aud jpy uh this one is a roller coaster ride look at this i mean this is just pure madness um you know like uh in the in the famous movie like this is madness you know but um yeah look uh <laughs> okay if you are keen on this congratulations there was a week for you um you know this was fantastic this was just amazing and look at this choppiness and if you're if you do like something like that then you know wonderful for you guys um at the moment what i would say here is that look i'm gonna take a very conservative approach and i'm gonna let's say for the downside i'm gonna stick to some of these levels that i've mentioned previously i think this is this for this one it's time to go i think that maybe the 80 88.20 zone could be a, a good area to start looking at some lower levels or actually excuse me or actually maybe this inside swing uh low the 88.55 so from here we could start considering maybe a move back down but only up until these lows these 87.42 or something like that uh for the upside look i am i know that this could be a nice area here but i'm gonna start getting a little bit more excited with the upside from around this territory from around this 90.23 and i get it we have a downside line which could be in the way but i'm gonna aim for that one first and then we'll see if we clear it wonderful if we don't back to the drawing board nzdchf just a quick update as well on this one look i mean this one is pushing further north it's pushing it back above the 0 0.5745 when i mentioned that this was mono wide targets as well here for the upside and uh yep the the downside line is the next potential area so uh for the downside you need to see a, a drop somewhere below this zone i think let me just see this aha uh -huh, no sorry this is where i need to adjust this already i think this is where i'm gonna keep an eye on something around here i know i know it's a it's a bit of a territory to miss out but hey let's be a little bit more on the safe side uh so for the downside i will look at something like this on, on uh, for a drop below the 0 0.57 territory for the uh for the upside yes so far it's working out my next target is the 50-day ema together with this downside line taken from the high of the 24th of january uh usd jpy just a quick update on that one as well so look i mean this one's interesting and uh, of course 
uh, the fact that uh, we are ha we had yesterday a nice beautiful reversal, but yeah, that of course came because of the um, that came because of the mm, the positivity from in the U.S. markets because everybody was jumping off from the yen. Um, but still, in general, we are still below the EMAs, below all of these EMAs. So in a way, we could say that hey, this is still this still could be seen as a bearish indication. Um, so let's um, consider that aspect. And the fact that we're holding below the 133.55 territory, now that's where it's becoming a little bit interesting as well. Because again, yes, we are having that rebound, but can this be maintained? Um, that's why my upside scenario is from around here, somewhere from around this 135.1125 territory, approximately around here. If we push back above it, then yes, I will go a little bit more to the upside. Uh, but at this point, I'm cautiously bearish. GBP, JPY. This one's having a nice, beautiful retracement. Look, I mean, I talked about this. Oh, and by the way, uh, previously when I talked about this and I said, look, maybe we'll get that retracement earlier, but it might, you know, it's still the target is the, the upside line. Well, we got the test of this upside line. Wonderful. Uh, so we got a nice, good move here. Um, now the question here is, can we get a hold up? Uh, can we get a hold up near this, uh, uh, near this near these emas and uh yep so far we're getting that yesterday we got that of course and today we're getting that so but if we start pushing through them then well uh watch out for this downside line right here taken from the high of the 28th of february mm, and uh yes this could be our next good little target but again let's not rush into anything let's wait and see um so gbp aussie um also a similar thing here so look we're violating right now this upside line and i talked about this and i said that if you break and stay below it then yes i will go a little bit lower but currently we're just breaking it because um lay, hey let's see if we're not going to get something like a false breakout or anything like that like a tease here mm, so yeah but um at the moment yes it's kind of i'm leaning a little bit to the downside just because it's breaking this upside line but again I want to see what's going to happen further because if it's if it's just going to give us that little false breakout then mm, yeah um i would say it might you know push back up and again maybe we're forming a possible bullish flag here or a bullish pennant whatever you want to call it here in this if this is one of those uh and if that's the case then yes i mean this could pop back up but um look let's uh let's wait and see uh let's wait and see for still for me even even if it is a bullish flag or you know, this upside line, it respects the upside line. Still, for the upside, I need to see a push somewhere above that 1.8325 territory right here. Um, Euro GBP. Uh, Euro GBP is quite an interesting one. Um, so, yep, uh, interesting at the same time annoying. Uh, that's for me for specifically. But, um, yeah, look, um, yesterday we pushed higher. And I said that if we continue to trade here somewhere below this, say if we fall back below the 108 EMA, I'm going to aim lower. And to be honest, I'm still aiming lower for that 208 EMA again. I want to see if we're going to reach that or not again. Uh, but the, for me, still the more interesting part would be if we would get a nice clear break through the uh through this ema so for now i am kind of mainly sticking to these emas not the levels but if we start clearing the 200 day ema then i'm keeping an eye on that 0 0.87 uh 20 territory somewhere around here if we clear that then yes this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and potentially more sellers could join in but it, from the very very short term perspective from the from the intraday intraday perspective as long as we stay below the 100-day EMA, I'm going to aim for that 200-day EMA. If we push back above the 100-day EMA, I'm going to aim for that 50-day EMA. Just kind of, I'm trying to get a simplistic approach on this on this pair because it, it does have a mind of its own, to be honest, sometimes. So, yeah. Um, and, of course, keep your eyes on these uh, European inflation numbers. Let me just double-check those very quickly. Uh, so, yeah, today we uh, we are having the inflation numbers from Europe, from the Eurozone. So, okay, so what's interesting there is that mm, the numbers are expected to rise, actually. So, apart from the year-on-year -year number, I think, um, previous was 8.6. Ah, okay, so the forecast is, is for a, a little decline at 8.5. 
but the core is expected to rise. The core year on year and month on month are expected. The month on month figures in general are expected to rise quite decently from the previous ones. I mean, if the previous one was, let's say, the the year on year, uh, the the headline year on year month, uh, sorry, the headline month on month CPI figure, uh, previous was minus minus zero point two. This one is expected as plus zero point eight. So that's a decent jump. Let's see how this is going to play out, guys. I mean. Maybe we could get, uh, if that comes out, if the numbers come out even bigger than the forecast, well, we could see the euro maybe pushing a little bit to the upside um, against its major counterparts. But again, uh, let's uh, let's not rush into anything. Let's let's wait for the data. Uh, and so, yeah, the similar story with the uh, euro dollar. Look how well we've rebounded from that uh, territory with 1.05, um, 24. Five zone 1.0525 yeah approximately around here basically look how well we rebounded from that 208 ema that's great um we pushed back up we cleared the 100 we're now near the 50 um and i said to you what i said to you before that in my previous videos this week that if we um, if we do push back above the 50 day ema i'm going to aim for that 1.0748 um and then we will take it from there so for now long story short i am uh, keeping close eye on that 50 day ema if we continue to trade above it and uh yep uh, i will go for this territory for the uh, 1.07 well let's maybe round it up even to 50 i think that's good. that would be quite reasonable to say so the 1.0750 territory keep your eyes on that one um uh, maybe even 60 who knows again depending on the data um uh, but again let's uh let's wait and see um if uh yeah if the data is not satisfactory then uh this if we stay below the 50-day ema don't be surprised if we drift back down <clears throat> all the way to the 100 or even the 200-day ema so keep that in mind guys at the moment I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside, but just because again the DXY is declining. But um, yeah, if, it, it might change very quickly. So if we do stay above the 50-day, I'm gonna aim a little bit higher. But if we start moving back below it and we stay below it, then you know, yes, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm gonna start even targeting the 200-day EMA, not to mention the 100-day EMA. So guys, that's it for this session and for this week. I really happy. I'm really happy for you. I mean, I mean, really happy for everybody, guys. I mean, I hope this week was uh, nice to you, given the you know the craziness we had. Um, look, don't forget that next week we might have that craziness again. So just be cautious, be careful. It's it's a very choppy market right now. Have your stop losses in place always risk always risk what you can afford to lose that's most important guys so yeah thank you very much for tuning in and watching this one till the end i really appreciate your views your likes your comments in general everything so guys really really appreciate that um and uh yeah if you want to catch me um on monday as always uh seven o'clock gmt time yep uh, you can tune in here um you can watch the replays as well if you wish but um yeah you can join in the live session seven o'clock gmt time just a nice kind of time before the market opens and look i i promise i'll try to sort out the lights uh again because again this my yeah my <laughs> my bald head is reflecting uh the uh the, the light very very easily so yeah i mean uh, i think you, you got blind from you know watching the stream today so um, anyway, guys, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, like I said, have a wonderful trading day. It's Friday. Don't overtrade and everything will be fine. Have your stop losses in place and everything will be fine. So, yeah, thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.